Hello everyone, I'm Rainiel and I'm gonna give you a virtual tour to the National Museum of Fine Arts. The National Museum of Fine Arts is located on Padre Burgas Avenue across from the National Museum of Anthropology in the eastern side of Rizal Park. The museum, owned and operated by the National Museum of the Philippines, was founded in 1998 and houses a collection of paintings and sculptures by classical Filipino artists such as Juan Luna, Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, and Guillermo Talentino. And our tour starts with the one of the best known paintings in the country, Juan Luna's Spoliarium. And in the old Senate Hall, at the upper floor features an entablature of historical lawmakers and moralists done by the celebrated sculptor Isabella Tampinco. Other galleries features religious images, botanical prints, neoclassical sculpture, World War II paintings, Amor Solos Rural Landscapes, the GSIS Collection, Modern and Abstract Arts, Political and Social Commentary, and the Sculptures of Guillermo Tolentino. But in our tour, we will focus on the greatest masterpieces of arts in the history of the Philippines through the years and the art that represents it. First up is Juan Luna's Espolarium. It brought historical triumph not just to Luna but also to the Philippines in 1884 when it bested Spanish artist and won a first class medal in Madrid, a feat whose result was proof of racial equality in the world of arts. The paintings features a glimpse of Roman history centered on the bloody carnage brought by the gladiators' matches. Spoliarium is a Latin word referring to the basement of the Roman Colosseum where the fallen and dying gladiators are dumped and devoid of their worldly possessions. The painting symbolizes the despair and the countless deaths of Filipinos during the Spanish reign. The Espolarium was bought by Spanish government in 1885 and stayed at the Museo del Arte Moderno until 1937. Suffering damage when the museo was burned during the Spanish Civil War, Generalissimo Francisco Franco ordered the painting transferred to Madrid for restoration and in 1958 it was donated to the Philippines as a gift of the Spanish government. And it was finally displayed in the National Museum in the Philippines. The next one is Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. His famous work is El Asesinato del Gobernador Bustamante or The Assassination of Governor Bustamante was a political statement so controversial that the painting was never displayed in Spain. Completed in 1853, this oil canvas depicts an actual historical event when Governor General Fernando de Bustamante, having jailed these critics including the Archbishop of Manila, Francisco de la Cuesta, provoked an attack by a mob of friars at his palace in October 1719, killing him and a son who tried to defend him during that period in Philippine history. The church, principally the friars, stood as the only opposition to the governor to whom the Spanish king had granted almost absolute power and who, as head of the legislative judiciary and military branches, was answerably only to the monarchy. Writer Nick Joaquin points out that the incident was not so much a conflict of church and state as it was a demonstration of the clergy against a perceived dictatorship. An early exercise, if you will, of people power. 
Gallery 5, which a homage to national hero Jose Rizal, exhibits two interesting works. One is a painting by Martin Abellana called The Rizal the Reformist, an old on canvas completed in 1960. Abellana was a renowned artist from Carcar, dubbed as the Dean of Cebuano Painters and the Amorsolo of the South. There are a number of interesting elements featured in his painting, two clay sculptures created by Rizal, a triumph of science over death and the triumph of death over life, were gifted by him to his friend Ferdinand Blumentri. Rizal is shown using a wooden pen with a metal nib behind the common speculation that he employed a feathered quill. A saber hanging on the wall contrasts with his long-held belief that the pen is mightier than a sword. The books displayed on his desk include the works of William Shakespeare and Webster's Dictionary as befits a prophetic writer like him. At the other end of his gallery are a number of actual sculptures the most interesting of which is La Venganza de Madre, or Mother's Revenge, a rendering of a mother dog trying to rescue her pup from the jaws of a crocodile. Legend has it that this terracotta carving was inspired by incident in which the puppy of Rizal's dog was actually devoured by a reptile. Created during his exile in the Pitan in 1894, this work is supposed to be an allegorical representation of Filipino patriots trying to save their helpless and defenseless countrymen from the tyranny of Spanish rule. There is a significant painting of Hidalgo in the museum, which is a copy of the real thing, the La Barca de Acuarento, or the boat of Asheron, was an 1887 oil-on-canvas work that was Hidalgo's most awarded piece. Done in a neoclassic style, this painting features a classical mythology ferrying condemned souls across the river Asheron and towards the gates of hell, inspired by reading of Dante's Inferno. Hidalgo painted a dark sinister ferryman glaring at the figures who are confused and in turmoil extruding an air of uncertainty as to their final destination and that's it for our virtual tour i hope you guys enjoy and learn many things thanks for watching